Alright, in this video we're going to continue with some statics revision and we're actually going to be looking at distributed loads now. So in this first example we have what, we, what is called a uniformly distributed load and essentially what it means is that we have the same amount of load distributed across an entire section. So in this case it is saying that it has a distributed load of 10 kN per meter and we have a beam of total length of 5 meters. So normally when you have a rectangular load or an uniform load, you have a, some sort of rectangular area, then the area of that rectangle is going to give you the magnitude of the force. So there's going to be a resultant force that is going to be equivalent to the entire effect of this uniformly distributed load on the beam. And the resultant force will always be acting at the centroid of that area. So if you think about a, a of this distributed load as a very large block of some mass m, then this would be kind of like the center of mass. And essentially we know that when we have a large body, then that center of mass is basically like a point in space that contains all the mass of the entire body. Uh, so it's a very similar concept. In the case of a rectangle, we know that this is going to be located halfway through, so if our total length is L, then that's going to be L2 on both sides. Alright, so essentially this is what is going to what we're going to have here. In our case, we have the total magnitude of this distributed load is 10 kN per meter. So this is going to be the total height of this section. So this is going to be 10. And we're going to multiply that by the total length of the beam, which is 5 meters. And that's going to give us a total resultant force of 50 kN. All right, and now it is going to be acting halfway through, so that means this is going to be acting 2.5 meters from the left or the right. So if we now proceed and draw the free body diagram of this particular beam, we're going to have two resultant forces, one over here and one over there, so let's call this one RA, RB on the left, and then right in the middle we're going to have our resultant force, that's 2.5 meters, and then 2.5 meters over here. Now, what we're going to have is the resultant force, which basically comes from the fact that we have this uniformly distributed load over here. And this is going to have a value of 50 kN. And the next thing is, well, we would normally have, since this is a hinge support on the left, we would normally have an, an X component for the reaction at A. But we know since there's no other horizontal forces acting on the system, this is immediately going to be zero. So we can solve this system by simply taking some of the forces in the y direction. So let's assume that this is going up. So that's going to be zero. And then the next thing is, well, we have 50 kN going down. Then we have RA and RB, which means that RA plus RB is going to be equal to 50 kN. And now we take the sum of the moments. Let's choose some of the moments about A. And let's assume that this is the positive direction, so clockwise is positive. Now the next thing is we're going to have this force, 50, times the total distance of 2.5. That's going to be rotating clockwise about the point A. And the next thing is we're going to have this force RB, which is 5 meters from there. That's a perpendicular distance. And that's going to be uh, rotating in the opposite direction, so that's going to be negative. So we have 5 times RB. Then we're going to have RB is going to be equal to 50 times 2.5 divided by 5. And that's going to give us a result or a reaction force of B of 25 kilonewtons. Okay, so that means that RA is also going to have a value of 25 kilonewtons which we can solve simply by solving this value back into the first one. And that's about it. So that's all our reaction forces in this structure. It is not unexpected since this is actually a symmetric loading. So basically the resultant force is acting right at the middle of this structure. So we expect the reaction forces on both supports to be exactly the same. Now the next thing is I'm going to show you an example of another very common type of loading, which is a triangular load. So this is quite common if you expect your structure to be loaded more on one side than the other. So we assume a linear relationship here. 
In this case, we're going to have the distributed load in the form of a right angle triangle in which the total height is going to be represented by the value of the distributed load. The width of the triangle is going to be given by the length of the beam or how long this distributed load is extending along the structure. And the final thing we're going to have is, well, the area of this triangle is going to give us the resultant force. But now, the resultant force is going to be acting at the centroid of the triangle. And for a right angle triangle, the centroid is always at one third from one of these sides. So it's going to be located over here. So this distance over here is going to be 10 divided by 3. So that's going to be one third of the total distance that we have over here. Now the resultant force is going to have the area of the triangle, so FR in this case is going to be equal to half of base times height, so 10 times 15. So that's going to be 5 times 15, which is 75 kilonewtons. And that's basically it. So now if we go ahead and draw a free body diagram for this particular structure, we're going to have a reaction forces at A and B. Once again, we have zero reaction on the X direction because essentially there's no external horizontal forces here. And then we have RB on the right. Then over here, we're going to have a resultant force of 75 kilonewtons, which is going to be acting at 10 thirds from the right hand side or equivalently it is going to be acting at 20 thirds from the left hand side. So now the next thing we can do is we can simply say okay so let's say we're going to take the following sum of the forces in the y direction which is going to be equal to zero and then we're going to say okay so we have 75 kilonewtons that's going down and then we have RB and RA which implies that RA plus RB is equal to 75 and then we have the sum of the moments let's take them about A once again let's assume this direction is positive so that's equal to zero and that means we're going to have RB is actually going in the opposite direction so that's going to be the total distance from RA to RB is 10 so that's 10 RB but this is negative and then we have positive this for 75 kilonewtons times 10 actually that's 20 divided by 3 because we're taking it from the left okay so now we rearrange this that becomes RB equals 75 times 20 over 3 and then we also divide by 10 so that's going to give us a total force of 50 kilonewtons and then that implies that RA is going to be 25 kilonewtons and if you think about it that is not at all unexpected either because it turns out that on this side we have much we have a lot more distributed load on the right hand side which means that this reaction needs to be larger in order to compensate for the effect of this entire distributed load on this side whereas on this side it's going to have to be less because there's less load on this side and that kind of makes sense so we can usually tell just by looking at the physical properties of the system whether our answer is correct or not now things get a little bit more complicated when we're dealing with distributed loads that are not just simple linear relationships and are not uniform and in the next video I'm going to show you how we can deal with them by using very similar concepts to what we have covered in this video.